What's up guys, my name is Jack. I've been looking to get a keyboard for my new 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So I've got here the Apple Magic Keyboard and the Logitech Combo Touch. I've never used either of these before, so they're both new to me. And I wasn't sure which one I'd prefer as they both offer something slightly different. So I decided to get both and I've been using them for about a week or so now and wanted to share my thoughts on them for anyone else out there that is also trying to decide on either of these as well. So let's get started first with the similarities. They're both full size keyboards with trackpads for iPad Pro with versions for both Pro sizes and other iPad models like the iPad Air as well. They're both batteryless and powered and connect to the iPad by the smart connector on the back. So there's no Bluetooth pairing or any syncing up. And that's pretty much where the similarities end. Design and usability wise, they both offer something different. The Magic Keyboard from Apple is very striking to look at. It uses magnets to hold the iPad in place and it just sort of floats above the keyboard with its cantilever design, it's very sleek. And the magnets feel nice and strong without making it too difficult to just pop the iPad off and use it. It's got a very smooth and rubbery feel to it and it's very solid and firm all over. There's no flexing in the keyboard or the magnetic cover at all. This is the black one, but the latest version is also available in white. I wasn't sure how well the white one would hold up and stay clean though, so I just got the darker one just to stay safe. And I think that this one goes better with the space gray iPad as well. There are two hinges, one to open and close the case, kind of like a laptop, and another that allows you to smoothly adjust the angle of the screen from 90 to 130 degrees, which I've found has been an all right level of adjustment for me. It would have been nicer if you could just tilt the screen back a little bit more, but for most things, I find it fine. In a lot of Apple's promo videos, they'll often show someone opening the keyboard pretty easily one-handed, but in my usage, I find that the magnets hold it pretty well shut and it's not really possible to do, but it might just be that mine's still firm from still being new. So it can be a little bit awkward to open sometimes. You can't fold the keyboard back onto itself like with Apple's keyboard folio. So the keyboard is always gonna be in front of the iPad while you're using it. It covers the front and back of the iPad, but not the sides, meaning that there is still space to store and charge an Apple Pencil on the side. And there's a nice big cutout on the back for all of the cameras and the LiDAR sensor. There is also a USB-C port on the left side of the Magic Keyboard, but this is only for charging the iPad through the smart connector. You can't connect any data accessories like external storage to this port, but using it for power means that it does free up the port on the iPad itself for other accessories, which is nice. Over to the Combo Touch by Logitech, which combines an iPad case with magnetically detachable keyboard, with a surface style hinge on the back of the case for standing the iPad up. The kickstand is nice and firm with a lot of adjustability and it can be folded all the way down into sketch mode. Unlike the Magic Keyboard, the case has four distinctive use modes, which Logitech calls type mode with the keyboard attached, view mode with the keyboard detached, sketch mode with the iPad lying almost flat for drawing, and read mode by detaching and turning around the keyboard so that the keys are turned inwards and you don't feel or press them on the back of the iPad as you hold it. Although with the weight of everything combined, I tend to prefer to just detach the keyboard altogether, but it is nice that you can store the keyboard this way if you'd like to. Although there is no pass-through charging port here like there is on the Magic Keyboard. Both the outer parts of the case and keyboard are covered in this woven fabric, which I really like. It has a really nice textured feel to it. And I really like the look of it. It really contrasts well with the iPad's industrial design but I am worried that it could get stained more easily and be harder to wipe down than the Magic Keyboard. The case covers all sides of the iPad with a long cutout on the one side for storing and charging an Apple Pencil, and it definitely provides more complete protection over the Magic Keyboard. There is some flex to the keyboard here though, unlike the Magic Keyboard, which is a lot more solid, and you do have to use the stand to support the iPad, there's no support from where the keyboard attaches, as this is just basically a fabric hinge. And while you can pick up both one-handed while in use, with the Logitech, the keyboard will just sort of flap around and dangle there, so it's probably best to pick it up with two. But the magnets that Logitech have used here do feel really strong. It doesn't feel like the keyboard's just gonna fall off, even if I try and make it by shaking it around. In terms of size, the Magic Keyboard is pretty much the same size as the iPad Pro, as it doesn't wrap around the sides, apart from the metal tube that runs along the hinge and sticks out on the one side. But the wraparound case of the Combo Touch 
does add about half a centimeter to the iPad's height and width. And in terms of thickness, the combo does feel more bulky and heavier overall, but you can detach the keyboard to ditch some of that weight, unlike with the Magic. But you are always gonna be stuck with the extra thickness of the case. And for me, it is a little bit too thick. It just adds a little bit too much to the iPad. I just wish it was a little bit thinner. The iPad does fit very tightly into the case, so you're probably not going to want to try and take it out very often. One slight issue though is the one corner would never wrap around the front of the iPad properly. And this would happen pretty consistently. I'd always have to dig it out with like my nail or something thin, but I'm not sure if this is just a problem with my unit. Both keyboards are heavier than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which itself weighs 682 grams. On their own, the Magic Keyboard weighs 710 grams, and the Combo Touch 780. Adding in the iPad, that takes the Magic Keyboard up to 1.4 kilograms, and the Combo Touch up to 1.46. So with either option, you are pretty much doubling the weight of your iPad. The Magic feels slimmer and lighter compared to the Combo, but the Combo offers more protection, which is definitely something to consider. When using these to type, the Combo Touch does have a larger footprint compared to the Magic Keyboard, due to the kickstand on the back. This does make the combo a bit more difficult for typing on your lap. I'm six foot one with fairly long legs, and it does feel a little bit cramped, but it's not been too bad for me. And the flexing of the keyboard here is a lot more noticeable when lap typing. I just find the Magic Keyboard more sturdy and better overall for lap typing. The keyboards on both are about the same size, with the Combo Touch offering an extra row of function keys, which I'll show you in more detail in a moment. The keys on both feel nice to type on, with both having one millimeter of key travel, so they're nice and clicky and responsive. And there's no butterfly mechanisms here. Both keyboards use scissor switches. They're also both backlit too, with auto dimming that cleverly uses the iPad's light sensors to determine the brightness of the room that you're in. If you're in a well-lit room though, the iPad won't actually let you turn the backlights on, presumably to save battery. They're each nice and evenly lit, with some light bleeding around the edges of the keys, but they're very readable in the dark and I'd say that both have about the same max brightness to my eyes. They are full size keyboards, the same size that you'd find on a MacBook, but for me, it has taken a little bit of practice in getting used to when switching between devices. It's really weird and funny actually, I've been using these so much lately that I feel like I've kind of forgotten how to type on a normal keyboard. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. I do think though that I personally would struggle more with the smaller 11 inch iPad and I'd find them a bit cramped because I've just got massive hands. <laughs> One small annoyance with the Combo Touch is there's no indicator light on the caps lock key like the Magic Keyboard has. So I'd sometimes accidentally turn caps lock on or forget that I had it on in the first place and I wouldn't realize till I'm halfway through typing a sentence. So that was a little bit annoying. But I really like the row of function keys on the Combo Touch. From left to right, there's a home button screen brightness controls, a button to bring up the on-screen keyboard, spotlight search, key backlight brightness controls, media controls for previous play, pause and next, a mute button, volume controls, and a button to lock the iPad. I do wish though that the home button could have been an escape key. I kept instinctively pressing it to exit out of full screen videos or other things and accidentally going back to the home screen but this would need to be supported by iPadOS and app developers, even if the keyboard had it. And also when adjusting backlight brightness, there's no indicator on screen to let you know what level of brightness you're at. But this is more an issue with iPadOS not having implemented an indicator yet like they have for screen brightness. And while I don't often need to change the backlight brightness, it's way easier to do on the Combo Touch using the dedicated keys. On the Magic Keyboard, you have to open settings, go to general, select keyboard, then hardware keyboard, then adjust the slider. It's really a bit of a faff and I'm surprised at how convoluted it is by Apple. But I think it's because they want people to rely more on the auto brightness to help preserve battery life. I really do wish that the Magic Keyboard could have had dedicated function keys as well, but it seems like after the touch bar on the Mac, Apple's just trying to make everyone forget that function keys even exist. Saying that though, because of the cantilever design of it, it would probably be difficult to press any function keys while it's in its most tilted back position with the amount of space between the keyboard and the iPad. Both keyboards have access to the same iPadOS shortcuts though. In any app that supports it, you can hold down the command key and you'll get a really nice list of all of the shortcuts available in that app. 
and there are shortcuts for switching between recently used apps using Command Tab, or opening Spotlight with Command Space like on macOS, or going to the home screen using Command H. Onto the trackpads, and the Combo Touch has a noticeably larger trackpad compared to the Magic Keyboard, and I found both of them to be very responsive overall. They're both clickable anywhere on the trackpads, or you can choose tap to click in the iPad settings if you prefer. There are some quirks with both though, but these are more due to app developers and iPadOS's cursor support. Some things don't work as you might expect, like in YouTube for example, you can't just click on the playback bar to skip ahead to a certain point, you have to click and drag the scrubber to where you want to go. They also both work with iPadOS's trackpad gestures. They're similar to macOS's gestures if you've used those, but there are some slight differences so there is a little bit of a learning curve. You can scroll up or down or left and right using two fingers. There's pinch to zoom again using two fingers. You can go to the home screen with a three finger swipe up. Open the app switcher by swiping up with three fingers then holding. Or switch between apps by swiping left and right with three fingers just to name a few. I do prefer the larger trackpad on the combo touch, but the Magic Keyboards is just as usable if a little on the small side. As I mentioned at the start, both of these draw their power from the iPad, so while they're connected, they will impact your iPad's overall battery life. I can't put an exact number on it as I've just not had chance to test it thoroughly, but with heavy use, these can noticeably affect your battery life, taking a good few hours off it overall. In terms of price, the Magic Keyboard starts at £280, or $300 for the 11-inch iPad, or £330, or $350 for the 12.9-inch whereas the Combo Touch is more affordable at £180 or $200 for the 11 inch or £200 or $230 for the 12.9 inch version. So which one do I prefer? Well objectively I think that they're both fantastic accessories for the iPad. They both offer great keyboards and trackpads with the Logitech offering an even larger trackpad and some really useful function keys. But when it comes to actually using them I just keep going back to the Magic Keyboard, I just prefer its less bulky design, and I love how easy it is to just snap the iPad on and off using the magnets. And I also really like the pass-through charging port that keeps the Thunderbolt port free. The Combo Touch definitely offers more versatility, but I just find it more cumbersome to move around with its less rigid body, and it was more awkward than I thought it would be to detach the keyboard and flip it round into read mode. When it comes to deciding between them, I think it comes down more to how you use your iPad, if you're maybe someone who draws a lot and you want to fold your iPad all the way down or maybe you want to keep your iPad even more protected with a case, I'd say that the Combo Touch is the better option and it's the more affordable of the two. But I found that I just really like to use the iPad as a tablet without a bulky case and then just quickly dock it to the Magic Keyboard for some heavy typing. It's not perfect though, I wish it had some function keys. And it would have been really cool if you could magnetically dock your iPad in portrait as well to see more of your notes and documents at once. I kind of wish that I could keep both of these, but for me, the Magic Keyboard just edges it out slightly for the way that I like to use my iPad. I hope that this video helped you decide which one you think you prefer. Let me know what your comments are and which one you think is best. If you've got any questions, then as always, drop a comment below. I'm always happy to answer. Thanks so much for watching, subscribe for more tech videos, and I will see you in the next one.